Welcome to this video of solving quadratic equations by square roots. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine the best scenario of when you should use the square root solution for solving quadratics and apply that by solving for the square root solutions. All right, so here we have our notes. And I wanted to do a little bit of review before we started. And so we, in the past, we were factoring and we factored by, solved by factoring, okay? And so we had this situation that we could turn up where we had a difference of squares, where you had two perfect squares with subtraction between them. And remember we had that this, to get x squared, we had x times x and to get 25, was five times five. And then there was a pattern with the multiplication. You know, we'd put an X in each parenthesis and a five in each parenthesis, and then one of them was positive and one of them was negative. So when we multiplied these back together, we would cancel out that B term, which is why there's no B term in here because they were opposites. Now, when we factor and solve, you take each factor and you set it equal to zero. So we have x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0. Uh, this x will equal negative 5 and this x will equal positive 5. So the graph of this equation, will one arm goes through the x-axis at negative 5 and one arm goes through the x-axis at positive 5. Okay, <clears throat> let's try it again. Um, always check for GCF if your A is greater than 1, and I see both of these have a 4 in common, so I can take out a 4, and I'm left with x squared minus 16. Now this is still squared, so you got to check. Because it's only two terms, we got to think difference of squares. I have two perfect squares with subtraction between them, so we can factor that. That's x times x. 16 is 4 times 4. So we have, remember our two parentheses, we have two x's, so one goes in each. We have two fours, one goes in each, one's positive, one's negative. Okay, and when you solve, you just set each factor equal to zero. The four is a factor, but four does not equal zero, so it's just an extra thing we ignore him. x plus four equals zero, so that means this x equals negative four and x minus 4 equals 0, so that means this x equals 4. So for this graph, the arms of the parabola go through at where x is negative 4 and where x is positive 4. So one thing I notice is I have the same numbers. One is positive, one is negative when I'm solving these. So um, also our all ever-present reminder of our standard form that the A term is always next to what's being squared, the B term is always next to the single variable, and the C term is always a constant, it has no variable. If one of, if B or C are, is missing, it means they're equal to zero. Okay, so the only time we can solve by square roots, so if we wanna solve by square roots, there can be <clears throat> no BX term. Okay, so what that means is there's, this does not exist in the problem. So you have an AX squared and you have a C. Okay, so we're going to take these same two problems that we just did up here and we're going to solve them by square roots this time. So to solve by square root method, you must have two terms on the opposite side of an equal sign. So here, x squared minus 25 equals 0. So what I want to do is I want to have isolate the x squared term by moving the 25 to the other side. So I get x squared equals 25. Okay. Then we're, once the squared term is isolated, we can take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of both sides, the square root of x squared is x and the square root of 25 is 5. <clears throat> but let's take a look. When we did it up here, we got two answers, a positive 5 and a negative 5. Okay, so why do I only have one answer here? Here's why. Um, we are going to have to put a positive 
negative sign in front of this and here's why because we're trying to find all the values that make the original statement true all the values that make x squared equal to 25 true I could either have a positive 5 times a positive 5 or a negative 5 times a negative 5 to make that true so I have to allow for both of them to be here let's try that again with the other one so we can kind of see how it works we're going to put equals zero there um, so you want to isolate what's being squared so we're going to move the 64 over first so we get 4x squared equals 64. We're still trying to isolate the x is what's being squared. So we can divide this 4 out. And we get x squared equals 16. Now that we're down to just the x squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 16 is 4, but remember it could have been negative 4 times negative 4 or positive 4 times positive 4 that made the statement originally true. So we are going to allow for both of them. Okay, and so we have a positive negative 4 just like we did up here. Okay, so that's the general idea. You want to isolate the, what's being squared and then take the square root of both sides. Now, of course, some of them can be more complicated than others. So let's try a couple of the easier ones first. Here, I've already set them on opposite sides of the equals for you. So once what's being squared is isolated, you can just take the square root of both sides. The square root of n squared is n. The square root of 49 is 7. But remember, we don't know if it was a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. Okay. So 2 would be the exact same way that's already set up and ready to go. So we can just take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 64 is 8. But remember, we have to account for the positive or negative. And then a little bit harder. <coughs> They're on the same side. We don't want them. We want to isolate what's being squared to so move the 9 to the other side of the equation through addition in this case. So you get v squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides and you get v equals positive or negative 3. Okay, stop the video, try number 4 on your own and come back and see how you did. All right, when I did it, I got x equals positive or negative 10. So those were along the same now, you're not always going to get pretty perfect square numbers like that. So let's take a look of other situations that can arise. Let's flip this over and take a look at the back. Okay, so here this one, I have it set up so they're on opposite sides. It's not quite m is what's being squared, so it's not all the way isolated. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 5 to get the m squared alone. And we have m squared equals a positive 10. Well, 10 is not a perfect square, but we're still going to take the square root because we want to undo this. We want to know what just m is. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of m squared is m. The square root of 10, does that break down? So if I look at 10, it's 2 times 5. So there's no pairs. This is actually as simple as it goes. So it's going to stay the square root of 10. But remember, we're still going to put the plus or minus in front of it. Okay. <clears throat> and they're going to get a little more complicated. Let's take a look at number six. V is what's being squared. We got to move everything else away from it. We're going to use our regular um, solving skills to do this. So first, I'm going to subtract the 10. And I get 9V squared equals 1. Okay. V squared is still got something beside it, so we're going to, it's being multiplied by the 9. We're going to divide off the 9, and I get V squared equals 1 ninth. Okay, so whenever you have a fraction, here's how we're going to deal with it. Uh, we're going to take the square root. The square root is really to each one of those things, so we kind of look at it like that. So the square root of V squared is V. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 9 is 3, and remember it could have been positive or negative. Okay, so we're getting a little more complicated here. Now, 
Here's the ones that look a little bit different. This is actually something called vertex form of the equation or near vertex form of the quadratic equation that we'll talk more about later. But when you see this whole parenthesis being squared, this is what we're trying to get alone. This is what this whole thing right here is being squared. That means we want to get that 5 away from it. Well, 5 is multiplying to the parenthesis, so we're just going to divide the 5 out first. And that's going to leave x minus 1 squared equals 9. <clears throat> Okay, what is being squared is that entire parenthesis. It's been isolated. Since it's isolated, we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Remember, this is really x minus 1 times x minus 1. So the square root of that is just going to be x minus 1. We don't actually need that parenthesis there. So we have x minus 1 equals plus or minus three because the square root of nine is three. Now every other time we've taken the square root our variable ended up by itself. This time the variable is not by itself. That means we need to move it to the other side like we would normally do when we solve. So we're going to add it in front of this plus or minus. So we want to stick it right there. So what that does is we have x equals one plus or minus three. Those are like terms. We need to go ahead and combine them. It's really breaking into two problems of x equals a one plus a three, which is four, or x equals one minus three, which is negative two. Okay, so this is one of the cases where we end up with two different numbers instead of one of the same, and that's okay. Okay, so we're going to use the same idea on number eight. What's being squared is the whole parenthesis x minus three. So that means we need to get rid of the four and we need to get rid of this plus three. When you're solving, trying to get to something, you got to do addition or subtraction first. So put order of operations in reverse. So we're left with four times x minus three squared equals negative three. We're trying to get this parenthesis by itself. So we're going to divide off the 4. And we get x minus 3 squared equals negative 3 over 4. We're just going to leave it as a fraction. That's fine. Now, this is what's being squared. So it's isolated. That means we can go ahead and take the square root. For both sides, remember, for a fraction, you're going to do each piece. <coughs> So we'll end up with x minus 3 equals, now can we take the square root of a negative number? We cannot. That means we need to stop this problem and we need to write no real solutions. Okay, so it can still happen. You just got to watch. We can't take this in algebra 1. We don't take the square root of a negative, one, a negative number. Okay. All right, two more. They're just a little bit harder. We're kind of just kind of stepping it up. Okay, the parenthesis is being squared. That means we need to get rid of the one half and the three. So you move addition or subtraction first. So I have one half times x plus two squared equals 12. To undo that fraction, I'm just going to multiply both sides by a 2, so that will cancel out. So I'm left with x plus 2 squared equals 24. Okay, what is being squared has been isolated, so we're going to square root both sides. And I get x plus 2 equals, we know it's going to be a plus or minus something. So does 24 break down any further is really what we're looking for here. The square root of 24, so I can do this as 8 times 3 is 24. 8, remember, I like to break down as 2 times 2 times 2. So I have a 2, 2, 2, and a 3. We've already, we rewrote the 8, so we don't count him. So I have a pair of 2s, which means a 2 comes out. 
and then I have a two and a three with no partner. So they get remultiplied together and placed back underneath the radical. So this, the square root of 24 is two root six. <clears throat> so now this one's going to be very similar to what we just did up here. We need to get the X alone. So we're going to subtract the two off. And remember, we want to put it like right there in front, minus two. So we get X equals negative two plus or minus two root six. These guys are not like terms. They're not going to combine like these guys could. Okay. So we're actually done at this point. That's going to be our answer right there. We're not going to take it any further. All right. One last one. Remember, it always has to equal, uh, you want what's squared on one side and the num all the numbers on the other side. So we're going to start isolating. We're going to move the 4 over first. So we have 10x squared equals 180. <clears throat> the x is being squared, so we want to get it alone. So we're going to divide off the 10. Okay, so we're going to divide off this 10 and we get x squared equals 18. Sorry about that, there's a little bit of a power surge. Now what we have is our squared term is alone, so we can take the square root on both sides. So we get x equals, and we want to see does 18 break down any further, it's 2 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3, which gives me a pair of 3s, which means 1 comes out. And the 2 has no partner, so he's going to go back inside. So it's going to be plus or minus 3 square root of 2. And that's all we can do with it. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in class.